just carrying on um, on methods of, of winterizing your hydrant. You can pump it out however you can. You can get the small RV um, pumps with a, with a garden hose and try to get it down as far as you can and drain it down as far as you can because you'll never know kind of how far that water level is down unless you are able to remove the top of the hydrant and, and visually see it. That is another way to, to do it. You can take off all these bolts, take off, the, take off the operating nut and the lid so that it's fully exposed at the top and then you can see straight down to the stem. That's the most, um, I'd say, efficient way because you could straighten out a fire hose, um, a garden hose and stick it all the way down. But another method is to use this little portable called the Purge Pro submersible utility pump. So it is pretty much a small submersible pump and motor at the bottom of a long tube. And it has the cigarette lighter that you can attach to a portable uh, power supply. So you'd pretty much get this down into here and stuff it down as far as you can and get out as much water as you can. Another way that uh, operators winterize is that if they're, if they're able to get out as much water as they can, they can add the RV antifreeze, which is um, supposed to be non-toxic, but it is questionable to, to use. It, it's kind of up to the operator's preference if they trust it or not but I have used it in the past on uh, some, tr uh, some hydrants I was having trouble with draining. So that RV antifreeze is non-toxic and it causes the water to not freeze at a normal freezing temperature. So for that, you would, you would buy uh, the four liter jugs and then add it into the port of the, of the fire hydrant. So it does come with experience and how much you could add. Uh, at times we would add, like out of, a, out of a four liter jug, we'd add half into, into one hydrant or an entire jug. Okay, one last little point I wanted to go over is uh, security for a fire hydrant. You can get locking, um, a locking mechanisms for your hydrant that would only allow access to the operator and the fire department. So I have one that I have with me. You would install it on top of the operating nut, but we don't have the right connection. But in theory, you would put this on the operating nut and then the cap over it like that. And then a, uh, a, a lock so it would sit like that so no one could come in with a wrench and open your hydrant and there's been times when people were taking water from the actual hydrant without the operator knowing so this is kind of an added uh, peace of mind for the operator and of course the, the community because what water is really valuable and we want to protect it so we don't want any unauthorized use of fire hydrants. We're gonna talk about uh, some fire hydrant mapping, some little uh, techniques that I've learned in the field. And all this, all the software is free and accessible using your cell phone. For the hydrant numbering, you kind of want to uh, uh, review any maps that you have of the community. And you kind of want to start from the water source, which would be the water plant or the pump house. So the first hydrant leaving your plant or water pump house could be number one, then the next one, number two, number three. But you want to uh, develop that numbering system before you kind of do this mapping. So for the GPS coordinates, I pretty much just use Google Maps. And um, if you do have good, uh, cell reception it's able to zoom in pretty good and then you would go over the hydrant and you're able to hold down and place a pin and then you would 
just go ahead and name that pin with whatever numbering system you would have. You could do it offline if you have access to a computer, say at your plant. You could go onto the Google Maps and you could kind of put a pin where you know where that hydrant is. So this, this technique can be used online with cell reception or offline. But you would take the note and put it on the inspection list. And also another tip is to kind of log in under or create a Google account so that you would, uh, this map would carry on to a laptop from your phone. You would just log in on your phone and your laptop so that you can access your maps.